All right, everyone. So as you can see, we got bombed with a foot of snow last night. Um, our nephew, Nick, says that he has dropped us off uh, a piece of meat. So I'm pretty excited. Let's go see what we got. There we go. Wow. All right. So this is this is a prime cut of steak. Look at all that marbling in it. This is beautiful. Uh, it appears to be from the Strip District uh, Meat Factory here in, in Pittsburgh. Uh, so, yeah. Here's the thing. We're going to sous vide this right now. And, yeah, more snow. Look at all the snow. It's like a foot of snow out here or something like that. Anyways, all right. We'll be right back. Welcome to sous vide this. Uh, here's our beautiful steak. It is still sealed in the original packaging. So we're just gonna set the scene a little bit here. We've got our sous vide running at 135. Right now it's a little higher than I normally cook, but let's see what we get, what the hell, right? Um, a lot of people like it at that temperature. So let's check it out with this piece of meat. We're gonna put a little olive oil on it, some sea salt, some pepper, some onion powder, and we got a piece of garlic we'll stick in there to infuse it. And I think it's good. I think it's gonna turn out great, but uh, I guess we'll find out, right? I'm gonna do all of this. I'm also gonna have to, to seal it as well. Uh, so we're gonna do all of that right now and see what we get in the end. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. seal on that um, it wasn't perfect though uh, you know it, it's a piece of frozen meat and it looks like the garlic slid to the bottom I don't really see this making very much difference at all but I usually do like to have it uh, up here on the side otherwise it's good we are gonna do this for about five hours uh, we're adding on an hour because we are dealing with a frozen piece of meat so again that times a little longer than I would like to do uh, but with a frozen piece of meat, we're not going to take any chances. Uh, we'll we'll kind of see how the texture turns out there. Uh, if it weren't frozen, I would be more looking at about three, four hours at max. But we're going to pad this. We're at 135 and we reached our temp. We have reached our temp. So the timing will start, start now. So let's make sure we get a sink. Super important, um, especially with frozen meat. I always have a, like a little standby device here that I use if, if we get a little float. Sometimes with the frozen meat, uh, we can get a little bit of float on it. Just a little edge will pop out. That's not happening now. So we're all good to go. So I'm gonna put the top on this Anova container right here. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna wait around. See you in, uh, I'll see you, in, see you in five hours. All right, so we're just about wrapped up here, but we have one little problem. We gotta shovel the, we gotta shovel that deck. There's a lot of snow out there. So, you ready for that? Can you help me? Yeah. All right.
deck is shoveled, the grill is on, uh, the cast iron is on the grill. I like to let that warm up for at least 10 minutes uh, on a super high heat so that cast iron is extremely hot. Uh, the next part of this is to get our meat out and pat it down dry. So you'll, if you can see it, I'm not sure if you can, but there was a spatula in there at one point. This started to float up, I checked on it, eh, decided to weigh it down a little bit. All right, let's see what we got here. Ooh, that's not the steak you, you signed up for, I'm sure, but I promise you this, we're gonna fix it. I don't think my wife wants to eat this in this condition, so. We are going to pat it down, and this part's really important because any moisture that you have on there will get in the way of a good sear. So let's really get it going. And you can see, even as we're doing it, you're not losing any of the seasoning that we put on there. So if that's a concern of yours, don't let it be. We're gonna be all good. And I'm actually gonna use some of the weather to help out here since it's so cold outside. I'm actually just gonna let this thing rest outside for a few, let it cool down for a second before we even hit it on that cast iron. But you can see I'm getting it really, really, really good here. And even on the fat, all the seasoning is sticking. So again, you don't have to worry about that. The steak is about to be pretty awesome, but we did cook it at 135. So we're gonna see what that result looks like. I usually cook a little bit lower for these type of steaks. All right, we're gonna do it. All right, Lorelai. You ready to sear the steak? Uh -huh. You ready to get this ribeye in the proper order? Uh -huh. All right, ready? Let's do it. we have here it smells amazing pretty darn perfect that is that is an excellent looking color here let me come around Let's see if we can get it right there into the camera Let's see if we can get a good zoom on there let's try it this way There we go. You can see it now, right? There we go. That's a good looking steak. We did not get the char that we would have liked to have got out there. So this is as far from perfect. We were having trouble seeing out there. Um, it's pretty cold, so. But I think this is gonna be a pretty good ribeye to eat right here. So anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one. So we got a decent char, but we didn't get the char that we really would have liked to have gotten. And the reason for that is uh, the, the grill, the, it, it's cold outside. You can see it's, you know, it's cold. There's a, there's a foot of snow on the ground. So we just didn't wait long enough. I normally wait 10 minutes and I really should have waited maybe 20 or 25 minutes because if you look now that we come out here, you can actually see the pan is just on fire. That is what you want. Uh, so the steak is good. It's a wonderful steak. The sous vide carried the weight on that, but we could have got better char. So lesson learned when we're out here in these colder temperatures, uh, the grill needs to just, the, the, everything needs to get hotter uh, for a longer period of time.